Earlier we spoke about photohalogenation of methane. So let's move on to more complex alkanes. Let's examine propane. Now what happens if we mix propane in the presence of a chlorine molecule and light? Well, we produce the following two products. We produce one chloropropane, shown here, and two chloropropane, shown here. Now, we want to determine which one of these products is the one that predominates. In other, wor in other words, which one is the major product and which one is the minor product. Well, to begin our analysis, let's compare and contrast the number of primary H's to the number of secondary H's. So notice that in propane, we have two primary H or two primary carbons and one, prime, and one secondary carbon. So that means we have the number of primary H's, 3 plus 3 is 6. And the number of secondary H's, since we only have one secondary carbon, we have two H's attached to that carbon, so that means the number of secondary H's is 2. Now, if this photochlorination reaction of propane was strictly due to chance, that means one chlorpropane would have a 3 to 1 advantage over two chloropropane simply because there are three times as many primary H's as secondary H's. But actually, if we look at our experimental results of this photochlorination reaction, we see that only 45% of our product is composed of one chloropropane, while 55% is composed of two chloropropane. Once again, experimentally, we actually produce 55 divided by 45, so 1.22 as many 2-chloropropanes as 1-chloropropane. That means there's some type of advantage which actually has to do with stability of producing this secondary versus this to, uh, primary. And that stability has to do with hyperconjugation of the radical intermediate. So, this is favored over this primary, even though there is a 3 to 1 advantage of this primary producing over this secondary. So, let's set up an algebraic equation to determine what the advantage is of the secondary versus the primary. So, here we have 1 over 3 multiplied by x equals 1.22. So x is simply the advantage of the secondary position over the primary position that has to deal with stability. 1 over 3 is simply our disadvantage of producing this secondary product simply because it has less h's than this. So, one-third multiplied by x equals how much we actually produce. So, 55% divided by 45% is 1.22. So, we solve for x and we find that x, or the advantage of the secondary versus primary position, is 3.67. So, let's move on to a different alkane. Let's look at this alkane. So, Let's suppose we have our light source and we add our chlorine molecule. We produce the following two combination of products. We have our isobutyl chloride and we have our tert-butyl chloride shown here. Now, let's, uh, let's once again begin our analysis of which one of these is favored. So, let's begin by counting our number of H's and let's compare the number of primary H's to the number of tertiary H's. So we have one tertiary carbon, so that means that because we have one tertiary carbon and it's attached to only one H, we have the number of tertiary H's is one. Uh, on the other hand, we have one, two, three tertiary or primary carbons, and on each primary carbon we have three H's, so that means we have a total of nine primary H's. So, that means if our reaction was simply due to chance, we would produce nine more of these molecules than of this molecule. 
But experimentally, we know that 65% of the product is isobutyl chloride, while 35% is tert-butyl chloride. So that means there must be some advantage, some stability advantage of this one over our isobutyl chloride. So let's once again set up, set up our formula and figure out what our X is, what our advantage of our tertiary position over the primary position is. So 1 divided by 9 multiplied by x equals 35 over 65. So once again, what is this formula? So x is the advantage of the tertiary position over the primary position and has to do with stability of uh, our radical intermediate. 1 over 9 is simply our disadvantage of this uh, molecule, this compound, simply because it has less H's than on the primary position, than the primary H's. And 35 over 35, 65 is simply how much of this product is produced. So we solve for X and we get approximately 5. So that means there's a 5 to 1 advantage of the tertiary carbon position and then the primary carbon position. So what is our conclusion? Well, when determining which product predominates, we have to examine two important things. We have to count the number of H's and compare them, and then we also have to figure out which one is the more stable or has the more stable radical intermediate.